Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge. And first things first, let's acknowledge my gorgeous new ink. It's out there. Yes, I put it out there. But if you got this gorgeous new tattoo, you would also be showing it off, right? So yes, this is my Sophie Lark tribute. Um, specifically, this is from Broken Vow. Um, if you can't read it, it says, I want to set you free, which is a beautiful line that Raylan says to Riona. Um, so there we go. Now, now it's out there. The bird is out of the cage. There we go. Um, and also we are going to be doing some wonderful wrecks today. I'm actually surprised I haven't done this one yet. Um, but I've, I've done a lot of other, um, taboo tropes or kinky tropes that relate to this. This is another one in the same way that like my voyeurism one where I'm going to have this labeled as taboo because I don't label them as kinky so that they don't get caught in the algorithm. But this one's, this one's not that taboo or kinky, but obviously because of some specific books that came out in 2022, which yes, those ones will definitely start this list off. Um, people are more interested in this trope. Now, um, those of us who've been reading BDSM or kinky books for more like we've known about this we very much enjoy this already um, and I think that books like these first couple I'm going to share really put it back into people's purview and so I've seen a lot more authors purposely putting it in um, which is totally totally fine because I'm here for it it's one of my favorite things that can really show up in any subgenre of romance and I'm here for it like honestly it can show up anywhere and I'm good for it. So some of these, we're gonna go through these ones kind of quickly. That's what I like to try to do with my taboo or oddly specific ones is to not have them be hour long videos. And also, again, a lot of these books are books that I've talked about in multiple kinky or oddly specific rec videos because again, these usually pair with other things. You know, good girl, praise kink, it usually pairs with other things, but I wanted to make a specific video for this one because number one, it comes up a lot in the search, search data. So it's helping me out. And also in my book, book, in my video recommendation form, which is listed down below, um, I have gotten this one popping up quite a few times, um, recently. And I was like, I'll finally make this one a video just to have a definitive place to point to it. But I got to tell you, there are so many recommendations for this one that they may not even be specifically listed under praise kink. So maybe I'll bring your eyes, your mind to some that you didn't think about for this, as well as remind you that like, oh yeah, that's maybe why I liked that book so much. Right. Also this lipstick is giving. Okay. I bought a sample of a MAC lipstick, which the sample size was $15, so that tells you. But after trying it, I understand I will be buying more because this color is giving. Like, like we said, I maybe shouldn't have paired it with like a bright butterfly headband, but I don't care. I was feeling the flying theme, right? That's what I was feeling. So let's go ahead and start. And like I said, we're going to start where you would expect me to start with the praise kink. Um, and this entire series by Sarah Kate, every single one of the books has praise in it, it at some level, but I specifically want to highlight both praise and mercy. Um, there's so many things I love about the parallels between these two books. I talked about it when mercy came out. Um, this one is a, uh, age gap, um, ex's dad um and then a lot of praise and submission and bdsm goes into this um and what i love about this book is number one this cover is stunning and it really caught a lot of people's eye i got an arc for this off of net galley because sarah kate um they had put some of these arcs on net galley and i had read sarah kate before and when i saw this and when i saw the title and i found out this was going to be a sex club series i was so on board so quickly and each book that came out has like i said both eyes on me give me more they all have some praise kink going, but this one has a lot in it. Um, you know, he calls her his pet, 
his good girl you're very much going to be getting those very like directly this is praise kink happening in it um and then why i also want to highlight mercy which this was you know this isn't the last book in the series we're gonna have two more at least that is coming but at the time this one to me was a very good like bookend because Bo is actually that ex from the first one like he very much messes up his relationship with Charlie and he's a bad boyfriend and a cheater and he also is very judgy of his father for his sex club he's very like small-minded about it but in this case he finally starts getting interested in seeing it and when he takes a, the quiz which there's this quiz that it's very similar to a real quiz out there that you can take to find out your kinks and everything and he discovers that he is a brat and a submissive and he gets paired with one of his dad's co-workers um who it, her name is maggie and she and him agree to be like look at this beautiful picture of maggie they agree to test out a sexual relationship together and this is a case of a man getting praised back and i have a few of those to share because especially when it is an MF relationship, because obviously I feel like it's more likely that you'll see praise towards a male happening in a gay romance um, or a BDSM scenario. But there are a couple I'm going to share where they're not BDSM and there's still praise happening. So definitely stick around for the rest of these. If you love these or you've been curious or you're not sure you want to go as you know, sex club as these are, I understand and I have some definite variations for you, right? So next I'm gonna go to another author who I could recommend like their whole, like this author throws praise kink into everything. <laughs> but I'm gonna specifically talk about my two favorites by this author. So first we have Carnal Urges and yes, I have my beautiful alternate covers right now because I literally dig these books out for almost every video. Um, and so I grabbed these ones first, but this one is book two in the Queens and Monsters series by JT Geisinger. This series took me by storm in 2021. Um, and we'll be talking about this one in just a second, but Carnal urges Daddy Declan when he gives praise to Sloan. Oh my God. Like there's a reason this was my favorite book of 2021 and it's because it has so many of my kinks that I have and Declan and Sloan like he is able to do praise in such a way where like Sloan doesn't want to need praise she very much is like I don't need it and then when she gets it from him she is so turned on so into it that she's actually kind of mad but he's just able to unlock her in a way that she just never expected because she's always the one in control with men and Declan not only doesn't let her have that but he also understands that she doesn't want it as much as she thinks she does and I just love that about them and in Brutal Vows, which this was one of my favorite books of 2022, no surprise there, um, this one was very interesting to me because this one has mutual praise in it. But when it's really, really beautiful is actually when Reyna is giving praise to Spider. So again, this one, and these books by JT, they aren't even like specifically BDSM. It's very much just these two as they figure out their their sexual relationship this becomes like an arranged marriage between these two um between the italian mafia and the irish mafia um actually declan has to set up this arranged marriage between spider and reyna's niece because he's already married but they need to make an alliance and so spider volunteers to do it reluctantly but he's like I can it's fine I don't care who I get married to I'm never gonna love again um he's a very broken boy and Raina she was in a very abusive relationship and so she doesn't ever want to have sex with a man again but there's something about spider that just draws her to him and now she's very much hesitant about sex because she doesn't want to lose herself to someone again and someone who could hurt her and specifically the feelings that she that she's feeling for spider she realizes that she could be hurt by him because she likes him so much. But Spider's not someone who would ever take advantage of that or who would abuse that trust. He just, he would never do it. And again, something clicks for Reyna because she really enjoys when he's praising her, calling her his queen, calling her beautiful. And she notices when she praises him back 
the reaction that she gets from him. And it's this beautiful, very organic moment of her telling him, like, you give me everything that I need. You're so strong. You protect me. She gives him these, like, affirmations. And as someone who words of affirmation are my love language. And he just, like, he blooms for her and it's very beautiful because like I said this is a mutual thing he praises her in so many ways but she realizes she can drive him crazy when she gives him a little bit of praise back and I think it's so beautiful I think it's so beautiful watching them both figure that out now I'm not mentioning all of them but again JT Geisinger puts Praise King into so much. It is in Pen Pal. I know Pen Pal is very divisive for a lot of people so I didn't put it in here but there's that in there as well as well as her um beautifully like cruel duet there is a lot in there and her other mafia books have versions of it as well like she she puts it she puts it in there okay but i just picked my favorites so then another author who writes a lot more like pretty much everything by her has bdsm in it and pretty much every book in this series has some kind of praise in it but we're going to start at the beginning because you know what the beginning is a mighty fine place to start and that is priest by sierra simone um mm, there's just something about this cover okay the the new covers they just can't compare with this okay they just can't this is beautiful this is a book that i think scares a lot of people and that they feel will be very taboo um maybe it's just that i've read so many extremely taboo things in this that i actually find this this really beautiful and not as taboo there definitely are some like sacrilegious scenes in here so i can understand if you are catholic if you are religious this making you uncomfortable but i've also heard from some catholics that they found it very interesting but i would never push that on anyone that is completely up to you but in this one we have father tyler bell who is a priest and this story begins with him starting to hear confessions from this woman who is telling him some very sexual sins that she has done and is thinking about doing and they turn him on and he feels very uncomfortable about this and then it becomes clear that she's continually coming back to see him purposely to kind of arouse him and get it to that and see Tyler Bell he wasn't always a priest in fact he became a priest as a form of atonement um after he lost someone very important to him so his motives for becoming a priest were very much about controlling himself and the urges that he used to have and you know that that's something that he maybe didn't think about too well before doing so when this temptation comes into his life and this woman comes into his life she's really going to test his control and test his relationship with God and is his relationship with God the way that it's supposed to be or has he made it something maybe it shouldn't have been like there's so much that get expressed in this so that's kind of what I mean is that I don't feel like this one is as like it's still taboo it will still have things that will probably make you a little uncomfortable again if you're very religious but I also think that Sierra Simone doesn't do these kind of books just to mess with religion the way that some other authors do okay like there are some priest romances you read that you can tell that person hates their religion they grew up in and they just want to mess with it and i've got to tell you um that even in the religious background that i grew up in in the faith that i have i found this very therapeutic in some ways is it still dirty and nasty and is there a lot of praise from tyler to his woman yes yes there is and again this one also sinner and Saint have that in them as well and so do other books by Sierra Simone but I wanted to bring this one up because I just think it's I think it's very beautiful and their relationship how it unfurls is very powerful to me okay again another author who puts some praise into pretty much every book in this series but I'm gonna show you my favorite one but if you start this series and you like it I think you will like what you find in the whole series and again this is a series that won't surprise anyone it's definitely on the tippy top of a lot of people's lists but i have twisted games by anna huang i'm also extremely happy that i finally got a copy of with the one with reese on the cover um i originally only had the alternate covers but i'm still missing twisted 
love, but that's my least favorite one anyway. But anyway, Twisted Games is a bodyguard romance. It is a princess and bodyguard romance. And I just, I love that. Okay. I like modern royalty romances, even though they really only have like two ways that they go. <laughs> they really only have the way where the person has to leave the royalty to get married or they make the person royal when they get together. Like there's really only two stories, but I loved this one because it gave me all the Princess Diaries 2 vibes. I loved Reese. I love that it was Grumpy Sunshine. I loved, I think this one is Bridget, right? Princess Bridget, yeah. And her needing to step up, step up to the throne. But this starts with her, I believe she's away at college. I think she's at college or else she's living on her own. And Reese Larson ends up taking over as her bodyguard when her bodyguard can't be with her. I can't remember. I think it's he got married or his wife's having a baby or he has something like he has some reason why he can't be with her. And so Reese becomes her bodyguard. And so they spent it's forced proximity. They spend all this time together and they just can't help but be drawn together. And the thing is too, is that Reese also has more of a complex lineage than we think, um, that may cause issues when Bridget gets called to be the next queen and what will that mean when she has fallen so deeply for her bodyguard like will this be able to work out um yeah this is my favorite one in the series I just I'm a simp for this kind of setup okay I love it so much and the praise in this is so good there are some dirty dirty scenes in this one they are great I love them so much and again if you love any of Anna Huang's books in this series. She has some praise king sprinkled through all of them. She does in her new series, The King, is it King of Pride? Is King of Pride? King of, I can't, I just forgot the name of the new series. King of Wrath? I'm not sure, but the first book in that new series also has some praise king in it as well. So I told you, it was a year, everyone was sprinkling it in everywhere. So you get a little bit of a dash of it everywhere. It's great. Um, because also both books in this series have praise kink, but we're starting with my favorite one, which was my favorite book of 2022, and that is Heartless by Elsie Silver. Oh boy, when Daddy Kate opens his mouth, and I'm saying daddy because he is a father, not because this one has daddy kink, even though they kind of joke about that a little bit. Um, well, at least Willow jokes about it, and he's like, no, we won't be doing that we won't be doing that. So this one doesn't also cross over the daddy kink. But if you have a daddy kink because you like reading about single daddies, then this is the one for you. This book has so many things that I love. But he is so like, for a man who's very taciturn and doesn't speak much because he's a grump, because he has a lot of stress, because a lot of things, when he gets into intimate situations with his nanny Willow, his mouth does not stop. And this boy, this man, is so uh what are the words like supportive in the bedroom and praising in the bedroom and telling her what a good good girl she's being for him that I just I can't I can't I can't okay I can't and also his brother in the first book Flawless does as well but I mean you definitely could start with uh, you should start with Flawless Again, I'm just holding this up because I will find a way to put this in like every every video I do because I love it. Keeping it going. Um, again, another author who puts praise kink in a lot of things. And I'm going to show you the first book in the series. Um, but I also, well, I'll mention the second. The second book's actually the one I meant to grab. Sorry. Let me just switch out. I thought I meant to grab the first one, but because it's the second and the third and like the fourth one that I have it the most. But Learn My Lesson by Katie Robert. Yes, this is my beautiful cover. People ask where you can get these. These are originally part of the Kickstarter that she did um, to get these gorgeous um, clinch covers done for her series. But you can get these on Amazon. These are not behind anything special you have to do. They range between like $22 and $30 for these hardcovers though. Some of them have been on sale at different times. So add them to your cart and keep your eye on them or I'll have this one one like link down below but anyway this one's book two in the series um and this one I love because um this is a triad this is an MMF um this one is at a sex club and this is between Meg Hercules and Hades okay and yes if you didn't know this the Hades in this series actually does connect with neon gods which I didn't put neon gods in this but that also has praise kink in it because Katie Robert likes to write praise kink okay it's she puts it in there it's there. It's gorgeous. But I love this one because Meg is a switch. 
um, Hercules is a sub, Hades is a dom. And so there are scenes in this where Meg is dominating Hercules and Hades is doming both of them. And I love it. There is pegging in this book also. Fantastic. Again, there is MM content and MMF content. Um, these have voyeurism and they have toys and they have edging. Like Katie Robert puts it all in. Okay. She puts it all in. And like, though I haven't loved some of Katie's newest stuff, this series will always be in my heart. It's why I wanted these gorgeous copies of it because this series this series came at a good time and I love it so much. So yeah, this one, this whole series really like where the opponent has some good stuff in it. The sea witch has some good stuff in it. But again, I love when a man is getting praise a lot. I really do. I don't think that it happens too much because we usually want good girl to be happening, but both Meg and Hades call Hercules their good boy at different points. And Hercules he is. He's just a young hero. He just wants to do best and like he thinks Meg is in a dangerous relationship with Hades but really it's kind of a twisted game that Meg and Hades like to play together and Hercules gets wrapped up in it and it's all great. I love it. I love it. So highly recommend. Then another one and this is one where this is very subtle in this one. This, the, this series doesn't have anything to do with BDSM. Um, but I will explain this. So I actually have Last Light by Claire Kent on this. And why this book is so satisfying to me is many things. This is a post-apocalyptic. This is an age gap. Um, he was the town mechanic, um, and she was a teenager when everything went to hell. Her grandmother has died. His daughter has died. And they're both going to be traveling in the same direction, and they end up traveling together. Um, she is actually a virgin because the whole world all went to hell before she lost her virginity. And while they're traveling together, she asked Travis, she's like, hey, why can't we do something to make each other feel good? Why can't we do that? And he's like, you want to sleep with me? And she's like, yeah, I do. I find you attractive. Um, you protect me. We protect each other. I want to have sex. And so he's like, okay. So they do that. And this man checks in with her constantly. There is so much beautiful consent moments in here. It's so good. And the reason why I call this one Praise Kink as well is because, like, he he will dirty talk with her, encourage her, but then, like, he will check in to make sure that he's pleasing her and need that, like, confirmation back from her, and she'll give it to him. Um, and, I mean, that's something like, she's super comfortable with, like, offering that back. You know, she's never been in a sexual relationship before him. But when she will tell him he's doing a good job and that he's pleasing her, he like loses his mind. So again, this one is one that it's more subtle and you might not have even noticed it if you've read this book before when I recommended it because, you know, it wasn't pointed out to you, but there are very different kinds of praise kink. Sometimes it's a thing that we know about and it's something that you, that should be like negotiated in a sexual thing. And other times it's just something that you're naturally doing with your partner because you like it and it comes across and I love that. I love that. Okay. Now to go back through a few, those are all the ones I physically had copies of. <laughs> there is Little Dove by Lila Frost. This one also has daddy kink in it. Um, when she is 17 years old, her, I, her father gets killed by this one mafia bot. Like her father has to pay basically. And so he takes her but he promises her that he will not hurt her or whatever and he's going to be her guardian until she's old enough and then he's going to let her go. And so for the time when she is underage, really he's just, he's a guardian. Like he checks in with her, they talk, sometimes they have meals together, sometimes he's gone for things, he makes sure she gets schooling and food and fed. And then something starts to change. And once she is getting to 18, he admits that he's very much attracted to her and he would like to be her daddy. Um, and he would, he would like to provide for her. And would she be his little dove? And she is like, wow, this really hot mafia guy wants me to be his girl. Yes, I want to do that. So 
that's how that setup goes. Um, this one, mm, I love it. The daddy kink isn't overwhelming. Everything is negotiated very well. He definitely is like teaching her about this before he's just like, yeah, I'm going to be your daddy. Like there's lots of like, make sure this is what you want because I'm not here to push you into this. This is not a requirement of me feeding you and taking care of you. Whatever happened with your dad, that's something else. This is between us. And I, I really, I really love that. Um, I really love that stuff. There is Games with the Orc by Catherine Moon, and I'm going to mention The Company of Fiends by Catherine Moon. I'm going to mention both of these. Both of these have to do with monsters. One of them is polyamorous, and there is, it's a reverse harem, and there is good girls and good boys in this in this harem. It's great. And then Games with the Orc, I just read recently. This book just came out, and our heroine, um, she ends a relationship that she's not feeling satisfied with because there are kinky things she wants but her partner doesn't want to do them and when this relationship ends she takes her friend's advice and signs up for this experience where you basically can it's a monster like date like it's a monster like escort service so you can hire a monster for the night to fuck you however you want and you can pick whatever kind of monster that you want um, and you go through like a dating service though and there are lots of safeguards like this was safe 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 but our heroine pays for a week's worth because she wants to try out all of her really kinky desires that she has and see if she actually likes them because that's the thing she knows what kind of like you know what kind of adult entertainment she likes to watch but she doesn't know if she actually likes it in reality because she hasn't been able to live it and so the man who gets assigned to her well is an orc um and he gets assigned to be her partner for that week and we try all the things and some of those things involve praise sometimes he's the good strict um orc who's seen to her pleasure and sometimes he's the ravenous beast who's there to just um, have some rape fantasy with her too. So literally we check out the whole board of things in this and it was great. His Pretty Little Burden by Nikki Harris. This one, mm, guys, this one is like part of a duet that's within a series. This is actually the first Nikki Harris that I read. I didn't start at the beginning. I know, I plan to. I have the first two books in this series and I want to get to them. I will get to them. But I actually started with His Pretty Little Burden. This one is Age Gap. It's not Daddy King, but it is Dom and Sub. And there's lots of praise that goes into this one. This one also has quite a few darker themes than even some of the other ones I mentioned. So check out the full trigger warning list for this one. But he calls her his little fawn and he takes care of her so well. Well, and I just I love it I love it I love it unhinged by Anli James this is an MM psychopathic romance where our one hero Adam had actually killed the other hero Noah's father but the thing is he is a part of a brotherhood of psychopaths who've all been raised by Thomas Mulvaney um, and he's been trained to kill and the thing is Noah's father was a child assaulter. I don't want to say that word and get dinged on YouTube here. Um, but Noah didn't know that and he'd actually blocked out what had happened to him as a kid. So he just knows that Adam Mulvaney had killed his dad. And so now he is like 18, 19 and he wants to get revenge. And Adam noticing that Noah's having a problem actually killing him is like, what are you doing? And he tells him who he is and he's like, well, your dad was a horrible person. I don't think you want to know everything that he's done. And he's like, yes, I do. And so once he finds out, Adam is obviously then very confused. But now Adam is obsessed with Noah back. And because he's a psychopath, he wants to do bad, bad things to Noah. And some of those things involve fucking him and praising him while he does. So there you go. Then there is Make Me by Summer O'Toole. This was a recent mafia romance I read. This one was totally crazy, you guys. This one has some very interesting aspects. Um, it was compared to Queens and Monsters, and I think it does in the aspect of, like, the hero falls first and he falls hard. Um, the heroine actually suspects the hero of having killed her best friend or her sister. I can't remember what it is. And so she gets a job at his club and starts trying to find out information about him. But when she goes to his club, he becomes obsessed with her and he wants her and he goes about getting her, even though she kind of wants to say no. He's like, no, I'm going to have you. I got to have you. You're mine. Um, and that involves some very kinky things that he wants to do to her and then praise her for it. So there you go. It's good. And then the last one I want to mention is one that I also just read. Um, and this book 
gave me some heartless vibes not to the six star level because this one does have a few weak points in like the third act what's going on with this and the hero i think trips from grumpy into asshole just still just just a little bit but there are some serious like vibes that i got from both of them because this one is also a nanny um, single dad scenario and that is Where Waves Break by Julia Wolf. Um, so Julia Wolf is also Jay Wolf who writes the new adult books that I love so much. Um, but this one when I heard what the tropes were and this is part of her like standalone like interconnected series where I do want to go back to the beginning and read this series but when I found out the tropes for this one I was like this is the book. This is the book where I finally read one of her like adult books which her new adult books are adult books too. They are, but I just hadn't read anything under the Julia Wolf name. I'd only read Jay Wolf so far. So this one is, he was a former drummer. Um, his name is Diego. And he gets asked by a, a band that, has he toured with them before? Or he knows people in this band now. Um, if he would do a short stint of shows with them. Um, but he has a son who's four years old. Um, we don't know what had happened to the mother in the beginning. And he's like, I need someone to watch my son. And they're like, well, um, my sister is going to be coming and, um, she could watch him as well as her niece. Cause she's watching her like nephew as well. So she watches, um, both kids. Um, the hero is very protective of his son and is very kind of like aggressive again and kind of an asshole in the beginning even though like she's there to help take care of his son and he's very rude in the beginning which can get to people um but the way this one has praise in it and the, some of the things that i just loved is that our heroine stumbles across him um giving himself pleasure and she can't look away she's like oh my god and so he catches her and she runs to her room and he follows her and he's like what the fuck why are you watching me in the shower and she falls to her knees and asks for forgiveness and he doesn't want to take advantage of the moment because this is his son's nanny so he just tells her he forgives her calls her a good girl and walks away <laughs> and she's like oh my god that just turned me on because the thing that our hero doesn't know is this wasn't just like natural instinct i mean it is but our heroine has dabbled in BDSM before so it's not like this was just she's not as innocent as she seemed to him she's 26 this is an age gap he's in his 30s but again it's not you like she knows herself she knows herself and what she likes then there's a scenario where now we get like back to our regularly scheduled programming and the hero discovers that he still needs a nanny because he doesn't have anyone watching his son during the day he's been bringing his son to work with him and he works in a garage and so it's not safe so he knows how much his son loves his nanny and so he asks her to come and he's like i promise i won't bring up what happened but i really need you i know you can take care of my son i trust you please come and now it's forced proximity we're living together knowing that we have complementary kinks and things are gonna go places things are going to go places. So like I said, third act conflict wasn't my favorite in this one, but I did give this one four and a half stars. The spicy stuff was great. The communication in the bedroom was a plus, not so great in some other places. But again, if you're going to look for some things to fill the heartless hole, this is one that could do it a little again, heartless. Perfect. This one pretty good. So there you go. Those are some recommendations for things with praise kink and good girl and good boy. And let me know some of your favorites. Again, there are so many of these, especially in the last couple of years, because people I think have really keyed in that everyone wants to use good girl and they want to put good girl in like their clips of it and everything. But it's something that I've loved for quite a while. So if you enjoyed watching this, if you made it this far, please make sure that you give this a like and that you comment down below one of your favorites, either one that I listed or one that you think I should check out. Um, I probably have, but still give me the recommendations. Um, if you have a recommendation for a taboo, kinky, or oddly specific rec, check out my link down below for a video recommendation. Make sure you click video recommendation and not book recommendation, if that's what you mean. Because I did have someone putting book recommendations in my video recommendation, so I think they probably just clicked the, clicked the wrong link. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video, friends. Bye!